I just recorded this whole video, the whole thing, and then looked at the microphone and saw that it, it hadn't it hadn't been recording and, and now I have to, I have to do it again. Hello humans, my name is Dale Kingsmill. Uh, a ways back in time, Dorian Chin on Twitter asked whether I have advice for handling weather in the game. I know it was you, I, I can't get the screen grab because like immediately after that is when I started an international incident over the existence of sausage rolls that lasted several days and uh, ended with several hurt feelings. But thank you for the question, I'm sorry that I took so long to answer it. Yes, yes. Let's talk about the weather. I think for starters you really have to begin by acknowledging what you're wanting to accomplish. A lot of people really like the fun of rolling on random tables. They like the unknown element that can bring to a session. Other people are a little more simulationist and they want the world to feel grounded in reality. Now if you want it to be randomized, roll on a random table. If you want it to be realistic, randomization will probably clash with that, so instead I recommend that you go and you look up an old farmer's almanac and just follow it day by day. But if you want weather to serve as a dramatic narrative element, you've come to the right place, babe. Weather in fiction is super tightly wound up in mood. When weather is absent, when it doesn't get mentioned, we don't really tend to notice. It pretty much shows up only when it can really add value to the story. Gut instinct might try and tell you that a specific weather equates to a specific mood, like rain equals sad, and you're not like wrong to think that, but often different types of weather can be used to symbolize all sorts of different things. It kind of ties in with the horizon of expectations and genre stuff that I'm always banging on about and uh, the wiggle room that you have within them. Rain makes a great example. Yes, there is absolutely a common association made between rain and sadness. Rainy funeral scenes. I'm not crying, it's just raining on my face. But think of the end of The Lion King, Simba climbing Pride Rock. That bit always makes me weep. Hans Zimmer, why would you do this to me? Why did you have to go that hard? Or think of Andy Dufresne escaping from Shawshank. In those examples, rain can also serve to represent a cleansing renewal, like a relief, like a, like a redemption. Then of course we have rainy celebrations. There's spidey smooches, romantic sprints, declarations of love, the Arashi Beautiful World Tour, singing, dancing in the rain. More than anything, I think that rain serves as a narrative show don't tell shorthand to express an overwhelming emotional state. The character is so sad or happy or excited or enraged that they don't even care that they're being soaked to the bone. Is it still raining? I hadn't noticed. Heat, I think, uh, is used a little bit more consistently. It's often used as shorthand for tension. Think of the, uh, the shimmery heat waves in westerns as the gunfighters square off on the main street with their hands hovering over their holsters. Stories of murder like Rear Window or stories about um, social tensions like To Kill a Mockingbird. Or Stories about both, like The Outsider by Camus. Just to show how strong the heat tension uh, link can be, let me draw your attention to the out of genre example of black books. You spend the whole episode basically watching the thermometer rise, waiting for the Dave Syndrome thread to snap. Three ninety nine, please. Fog and mist. Fog is mysterious, it's suspicious, it's sinister. Fog is uh, the death voyage from Dracula. It, um, it accompanies the arrival of the Black Pearl in Pirates of the Caribbean. It's like the only good scene from Jurassic Park 3. Ooh, it's the orcs attacking us Gilead in Lord of the Rings! Hell yeah! Quiet. Wind storms and lightning storms often overlap. Storms are used to represent the hand of chaos and loss of control, or else inner turmoil, or a climactic threat. <laughs> I mean, look at any Shakespearean storm, pick one. The titular Tempest or, or King Lear. Blow winds and crack your cheeks. Rage 
No! That word becomes symbolic of Lear's descent into madness. The Wizard of Oz is a great example too. The hurricane completely upheaves Dorothy's life. And again, in the Return to Oz movie, uh, a storm is used as almost this like terrifying transition between a world that makes sense to her and a world that doesn't. Although in Return to Oz, it's up for debate which of those worlds is which. Blizzards are weird. I never realized this until I was um, researching for this video, but it turns out that pop cultural representations of blizzards have this recurring theme of like, like revelation, but it gets like, like really super specific. Like uh, the hero is starting to doubt themselves, but then an almost spectral figure emerges through the snow to give them guidance and set them on their path. Luke sees Ben's ghost while freezing to death on Hoth. Balto encounters the great white wolf just when it seems like all hope is lost. Kimba, the freaking white lion, is set in the African savanna, and yet it still manages to have a magical snowy mountain that appears in times of dire need, and Kimba must enter the blizzard to seek counsel with a mystical freaking mammoth. I just feel like I should have noticed this trend sooner. And even when it's not so extreme as something like a blizzard, snow still is treated like it has this almost mystical, magical quality. It's treated as this joyous, wonderful thing. It's treated like a miracle. So anyway, you see what I'm getting at. The point is that humans paint meaning onto weather. Good rain knows when to fall and all that. And so when we tell stories, we use the weather to paint. It can be a very effective narrative tool, but particularly if you want to start adding mechanical weight to emphasize the reality of weather in your game. So like, I don't know, maybe they're having a fight on a rooftop um, and it, because it's storming and raining, uh, it's easier to slip and fall off the roof because everything's slick. So they might slip and fall and have to grab onto the edge and, and keep from plummeting off a cliff or whatever, I don't know. If you're going to have those mechanical elements, you want to foreshadow and bide your time so that the dramatic weather hits during the dramatic moment. To that end, what I've done <laughs> is take only the weather elements that I think would be interesting, like worth mentioning. Your list might be different. It's just that I'm leaning into that only mention weather if it adds. Uh, default weather assumptions are fine, like don't even bring it up. I'm leaning into that thing. I've split those into what are ultimately arbitrary but easier to remember categories. In my case, cold, hot, wet, and dry. And each of those categories has like three or four items in their list and they're ordered by increasing severity with the idea being that uh, you have to mention the lowest level before you can bring in the next. So, you know, you have to like mention that it's raining in game before you can claim that it's thunderstorming. None of you come at me with facts about sudden and surprising weather events. I do not care. This is about verisimilitude and truthiness. It's not about simulation. If you want simulation, we already covered that. Go get an almanac. Go on. So I actually like the idea of um, giving extreme weather mechanical influence, even if it's only something as simple as there's a heat wave, so you gotta make a con check every hour to not get sunstroke, that sort of thing. Whether it's simple or complex, but for me, I just think that it only feels earned if you build up to it. If you foreshadow it by talking about how like uh, families with kids have been hitting the harbor daily to paddle in the water, or the bartender is, has sweat through his shirt. How in order to sleep at night, the PCs have had to ditch all their blankets and even then they still toss and turn for hours trying to get comfortable. All I'm saying is build into it, build into it. And the, the build can be fun stuff too. You know, you could have a snow day, let the players pelt each other with snowballs for a while and build build forts and I don't I don't really know what you do on a snow day I've never had one although kind of that one time speaking of sudden and surprising freak weather events so you know like a uh, cloudy rainy thunderstormy flood now that's that's significant the the final level of severity in each list is the like real extreme weather extreme some of them that i have on my list aren't even so much weather as weather adjacent events so rather than it being a cool thunderstorm during the you know climactic battle with strad so it or a, you know, a mysterious fog obscuring the harpies that your party are hunting. Those are cool aspects to add to an encounter 
these sort of top level severity things, these are encounters. These should be complexly layered events that the heroes have to tackle if and when they come up. I think they're especially great encounter concepts for high level games. I've been banging my drum for years about how uh, a really great problem to put in front of Superman would be a natural disaster because there's only so much that a straightforward use of superpowers can do against an avalanche. The party will still have everything in their utility belt that they usually do, but they might have to think a bit differently about how they use them. How are your heroes going to help this region that just got flooded by non-stop torrential rain? How might they have to use the tools at their disposal differently in order to deal with that? What tools might they have to use that they usually don't, that they usually ignore? So that's my advice uh, for the use of weather. Maybe the advice is, is a bit nebulous, but I hope you still find something useful in it. But yeah, it's really just that idea that, um, that weather is ultimately set dressing. It can be really cool set dressing um, and you can, you can draw attention to it, but really it ultimately is serving the story that you already are going to tell. Except in the case of these really severe uh, extreme weather things that I literally just talked about. But you know what I mean, like, you know, um, maybe your play has escaped from prison and you're about to have this cool, uh, you know, fugitive sequence and now you can look at that and go, hmm, would a thunderstorm and, you know, flashes of lightning lighting up the landscape and gale force winds making it difficult to hear whether the dogs are coming after you, would that perhaps elevate the session. Hopefully this video gave you some tools or a nice framework with which to sort of think about that kind of thing. Now comes the part where I have to be a real YouTuber. Hi there, if you want to help out the video on the channel, uh, then you can hit the like button and leave a comment in the comment section below about what your favorite weather is. Do you like the cold? I don't know, let me know. Subscribe and, and hit the bell button because that'll notify you when I make a new video and, and that would be good. I'm also on other social media platforms and I have a Patreon. And merch! You can find me every week on the Eldritch Lawcast. We got a great panel of hosts and we all talk about game design and maybe you would enjoy that. Did I, was that good? Did, did you? <laughs> all right, apart from that, I do believe that's it. I'm done, email this to your grandma and I'll see you some other time. Oh no.